Guys, I got myself a broom. Hello friends, welcome back. If you have no idea why I make a big deal about this here broom, you should go watch my last video. <laughs> Let's just ignore the fact that I look a little crazy today. I have not done my hair yet. Actually, who am I kidding? I'm not gonna do my hair, I'm just gonna put it up. Um, I got lots to do on the van today and every day. Uh, I did a lot of work again off camera. It's been an interesting time finding work balance uh, with everything that I'm doing right now. I'm having to learn to seriously set some boundaries with my work. My work and life has just meshed into one, which I know is not a healthy thing. When I get invested in a project, uh, it's all I do and all I think about and I have a hard time disconnecting from it. No complaints here. I love what I do. I'm happy to be working on this van, just happy to be working in general. I think what I've realized is that I just have to constantly be seeking balance because I find it very easy for me to get a little bit unbalanced with what I'm doing. Gotten a lot of work done on the van this week. It's been another crazy week in here. I really do not have time to film a week's worth of my progress and then spend hours and hours and hours compiling that all into one video to be posted weekly. So what I am likely going to be doing going forward is pretty much filming one day of the week, maybe one to two days, um, and putting up weekly videos that way. But it's a lot less work for me to edit that video and put it all together for you guys. I tend to have an all or nothing mindset, which is uh, not necessarily a good thing for me. Um, for example, like I feel like I either need to film an entire week's worth of stuff and edit it into this big complex video or put nothing out. And what I really would rather do is be able to put something out consistently, even if it's a shorter video or, you know, just one day of filming. Anyway, so I'm learning to A, set boundaries, and B, um, finding middle ground that works for me. I think this lighting is not flattering. It makes me look like I have bags under my eyes. <laughs> ah yes, nothing like the hum of fluorescent lights first thing in the morning. Quick rundown of progress on the van. Last week I was finishing up these benches but did not get to show you guys what they look like so here they are. The only thing that needs to get finished is we need a little piece to go there. The reason that this is the lights flickering. Ugh, that looks horrible. Sorry guys. The reason that this does not extend all the way there is because of this corner. Uh, the lid would not lift up all the way if it extended here because it would hit that. So cut it off here so that it has the full extension. I also built the closet. Ooh, look at this. Got a little light up there. Obviously, it's not 100% done. This will end up getting face frames and then it will also get backs in here. But this top half is going to be hanging space and then down below we have some shelf space. Um, and obviously this will be covered with doors. Shower framing looks pretty much the same, but shower is my next project to tackle. So that will be fun. I think the last major thing I finished was putting up the rest of the ceiling. The freezer is still not trimmed out but I will make a trim piece for that eventually. Um, but I'm really loving how the ceiling came out. It's this like rustic gray barn wood. Um, I really love how it looks. Also started a little bit of the plumbing. These don't have a gas draw on it yet, so it's not staying up right now. Um, but as you can see, we got some plumbing that runs boop, all the way through and then through to my shower. So um, I need to finish this today. I do have the mixer valve for it now so I can run these hot and cold lines up to there. Oh, and then one last thing. I started to build a shelf for the headliner up here. It's right over there, along with my sad broken mirror. So that needs to get sanded and painted today. Um, it should be a super easy install. And it's totally black. Okay, there we go. Yep, so you can see the supports there, 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 and there. They're tilted to the side right now, but they'll be pushed upright to hold that shelf in place. <laughs> The lighting inside the shop when I am inside the van is terrible, um, but I wanted to show you guys this headliner shelf that I just put up. So this is what it looks like underneath. This is actually um, just a piece of half inch Baltic birch plywood um, that I sanded down really nicely and painted and then put, I just cut out a piece. Of, this is um, also half inch Baltic birch. I cut a one and a half inch piece to put um, as a cover here. 
So I actually, for this, bought a template from a company, a very small company called Vancillery. Um, and basically it just comes with a paper template and these nice little mounting brackets so that you don't have to fabricate it yourself. So um, not sponsored by them at all, but I will leave a link below if you guys are interested in um, grabbing one for yourself. In our first van that Joey and I built, we actually made ourselves a headliner shelf, no template or anything. We did the scribing for it. And it just took us hours because it's it's kind of a complex shape that you have to make. Um, so even though I'd done it before, actually because I had done it before, I decided that I didn't want to do that again. <laughs> so buying the template, buying the mounting hardware just made it so, so, so easy. And it went up in a matter of a couple hours, including all of the cutting, sanding, painting, all of that. I have a mess going here that I'm not proud of <laughs> that I need to clean up. So I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I thought that today was going to be a really super productive day of filming and, you know, getting lots and lots and lots of stuff done in the van to show you guys. I don't really know what's up, but I just, uh, I'm feeling a little off today. I'm a little bit extra exhausted and just like not feeling my best, feeling a little congested. You guys might actually be able to tell a little bit of change in my voice so I sound kind of congested. I think that I, I shy away a little bit from like showing the days like this on camera because usually I'm, I'm just not filming on days like this and I'm only picking up the camera like when I'm getting a lot done and you know have a lot of stuff to show you guys. Because I know that so many of you guys are doing DIY builds and going through the same you know kind of like process as far as building a van, um, you know whether you're doing this for yourself as a DIY build or you know, you're doing it for someone else, it's still a big project and it still takes a lot out of you. Some days are better than others. Some days feel more productive and some days it's just like harder. So I just want you to know that you're not alone. I probably will uh, end up filming more tomorrow because I think I'll probably um, have to pick up the speed a little bit again tomorrow. And one last thing I wanted to say, this is directly to the people that are like me who when you're working on a project, you get so caught up in what you're doing um, and setting goals and reaching those goals that you literally forget to take breaks. You forget to take care of yourself. This is just a, a reminder that it's okay to take a break. It's okay to take care of yourself. You don't need to feel guilty for not being crazy productive every single day and you can still get everything done uh, and not go insane. <laughs> That being said, I'm going to clean up, um, <laughs> take a break tonight. I might even watch a movie. I haven't watched a movie in like a month and a half, so I might do that. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Hey yo, uh, so much for tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's been a few days since I picked up the camera. In all realness, guys, I had to take a few days off. I was still getting little things done on the van, making a little bit of progress every day, but, uh, I think I just, I went too hard. Like, <laughs> I think I just felt a little bit of like mid build burnout, which I'm sure you guys, uh, if you've done your own builds or are working on it now, probably have experience too. So I just had to take it easy for a little bit. I'm feeling way better now. And I feel like I can actually get back to the work I was doing and be way more focused rather than like literally dragging my feet every day. I had a weird spur of energy the other night and I started working on the shower and I didn't film it, but you know, here it is. So you guys already saw the shower frame. What I did was I built a little platform there for the toilet um, so it sits level with the shower pan. This, I don't know if you can tell, there's a PVC liner there. It goes all the way across. That should definitely be your first step when you're trying to waterproof a shower, <laughs> trying to when you hopefully are successfully <laughs> waterproofing a shower. Um, PVC liner first, and then I got my shower pan down in here. Um, started to run some of the plumbing for that, so that does go down, because it'll go to a gray tank underneath the van. And then I just started putting up some of this foam backer board. In the past, we used Wetty foam backer board, which is a different brand. There's actually a lot of different brands that make slightly different variations of a foam tile backer board. Now the Wetty is a little bit different from this in that it has a really thin layer. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> a very thin layer on the outside that's 
uh, I want to say almost like concrete, but again, very, very thin. Um, but it makes the board rigid. So what we would have to do, because this wall here is curved, we would actually cut it into pieces and, and basically do it in like three different sections to fit the curvature of the van. I'm using Hydro Van this time, slightly different material, and it has a little bit more bend to like, you know, the overall thing. You wouldn't want to be like bending it crazy shapes, but because this is just a slight curvature, this actually forms to the wall perfectly. It's not quite tall enough so or, or wide enough, so I can't do it in one sheet. There still will be some seams, but luckily it won't be as many seams because I'm not having to make breaks um, in order for it to fit the curvature of the wall. Another key difference between the two, Weddy sells their own uh, joint sealant that they suggest you use with it, and that is, that's what you put in all the seams. That's how you cover all the screw holes. This is gonna be a little bit different. Rather than using, you know, a sealant like that for all the seams, what I'm gonna do is actually use a felt seam tape with the Hydroban liquid. Um, you can also use something like Red Guard. Just based on suggestions I got from other professionals, the Hydroban liquid is slightly higher quality than Red Guard. It's just a little bit more flexible, a little bit stronger. Again, this is just based on what they're saying. I haven't personally used it yet, but they also said, you know, Red Guard works just fine. This is just slightly better. So obviously I'm gonna use what's slightly better, right? some nice armpit shots here. <laughs> Current problem right now, after testing all of my plumbing, um, like 99% of it is great, no leaks. I have an issue with the shower mixer valve and we had this exact same issue on the last build that we did. And I'm realizing, um, guess what? It's the same company. So not gonna be using this company anymore. Thought it was a fluke last time, but it's obvious to me that their threads are not quite engineered correctly because none of my other threaded fittings are leaking and I did it exactly the same way. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to take this mixer valve out and actually send it back and replace it, which means that I'm kind of at a standstill with the shower. So uh, I'm gonna be moving on to something else because that's what I do when I get stuck. I just literally have to switch gears, move, move on to something else. So um, I'm thinking upper cabinets, because why not? move around these uh, four by eight, three quarter inch pieces of plywood. Not very easily, but I'm getting a lot stronger. So yeah, we're just making it happen, guys. I'm so sweaty and gross now. Um, guys, if I'm not completely jacked by the end of this build, I will be thoroughly disappointed because I am testing my physical limits. Interrupting this b-roll sequence to explain to you how I build upper cabinets. In the past, we have built upper cabinets both entirely out of half inch plywood and entirely out of three quarter inch plywood. When we built them entirely out of half inch, it definitely cut down on the weight, but over time, so this was our first van that we did this in, um, that we lived in for two years, over time, the bottom started to sag just a little bit. No bueno, it wasn't holding up to the weight we were putting in the cabinets very well. In the client van that we did uh, most recently, we did the upper cabinets entirely out of three quarter inch ply. And they were built like a tank, they were super solid. But 
parts of it were probably overkill. We probably could have saved on the weight. Uh, so after having done it both ways, the happy medium is now I use three quarter inch ply for the base of the upper cabinet um, because this is what's gonna be supporting the weight of the items that you store in the upper cabinet. But the side pieces are going to be out of half inch plywood because they're not necessarily uh, bearing much weight. Um, it's just, you know, part of the structure of the cabinet. So it really does not need to be three quarter inch. Um, and that's just one area you can cut down on a little bit of weight. So that's how I do it now. Three quarter inch bottoms, half inch sides. So here's what we're working with. I have a three quarter inch bottom. This is going to be the cabinet that's going on the passenger side of the van. And I have all my sides cut out. This is for both upper cabinets. Uh, so that looks like a lot, but it's for two of them. What I do is, you know, after figuring out the template that I needed for this, I have my side pieces that I know will go here. Um, also, just a side note, this part of the, why isn't this focusing? Okay. This is cut at an angle because it needs to match the angle that this is cut at uh, so that you don't have like a wonky straight piece there that doesn't end up matching your angle. For the dividers, you use the same template, but what I like to do is actually use a plunge router. This is one of my favorite tools in the shop. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, you've probably seen my very random stories where I rave about how much I love using this thing. But what I did was routed a half inch wide by quarter inch deep groove and my divider pieces, is it this one? I think it's this one. I have taken off a quarter inch from the bottom here because I knew that it would be sunken by a quarter inch. That way, when I go to put it in, it perfectly fits. Okay, I can't focus on what I'm doing when I'm trying to look at the camera and this. So it'll fit right in there and be glued exactly in place. I also have used my hole saw to cut out where I'm going to have some under cabinet lighting. And then I'm also gonna use the router to do essentially the same thing I did here. I'll put a quarter inch bit in there um, and actually route out along here. And that'll actually leave, how many times can I say actually? I'm so sorry. <laughs> that will leave room for the wire from the light to be ran uh, through the back of the cabinet without actually just like, you know, hanging out on top of the wood here. So it'll be completely flush. You can put another piece over top um, so that you, you're never seeing the lights inside the cabinet. So for these, I used a half inch straight bit. Now I'm switching over to a quarter inch round nose bit. And I'm thinking probably going to go half inch deep on this just to make sure I have enough room for those wires to sit down in there. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna switch out the bit, get that done. FYI, I always unplug the router before I switch a bit out. And if you're using one, you should do the same because if something were to malfunction, this thing would take your finger off faster than you would believe. So safety first. And this is what we are left with. So as you can see, we've got a nice little area for a wire to uh, hang out in. <laughs> and these are gonna be the two bases. So again, this one's for the passenger side. This will be over the kitchen, which is why we have lights here. This will be over the driver's side. We have both of them divided in two. Uh, so we have, you know, division here, division here, and then this half is split in half again because this section will be her control center. Little update for you on the mixer valve for the shower that I had mentioned earlier. I spent a good portion of today doing research as to what in the world could be causing it to leak when no of my, no, none of my other threaded connections are leaking. And I ended up reading through a ton of reviews for the specific one that I bought. And even though the overall reviews are really good, like 4.5 out of five stars, maybe 4.7, uh, sure enough, the one star reviews are complaining of the exact same thing that I am dealing with, which is that the threading is slightly off. So no matter what you do, it's still leaking a little bit. So I had to take it off completely. I'm gonna have to send it back. I had to order a new one from a completely different company. And now I have to wait a couple days to get that. So in the meantime, my focus is gonna be getting these upper cabinets done in the next day or two while I'm waiting for that because I just gotta keep moving while I'm waiting on things. Um, and then hopefully later this week, I can get back to the bathroom, uh, get the toilet all put in, get it tiled. 
but you guys are gonna have to wait until the next video to see that because it's late and I'm gonna sign off. So thank you guys so much for watching. I wish I had a little bit more to show you in this video, but honestly, this is just the, the reality of building a van. I'm showing you guys the fun parts, the victories, and the struggles. And this one was a lot of struggles, so just bear with me. It's kind of how it goes. If you're new around here, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And like and comment. I love to hear from you guys. And thank you for being so patient with me. And yeah, I'm excited to show you guys the bathroom and finished upper cabinets next week. So stay tuned and I'll see you then.